Show me some love. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Eighth grade, unit five, lesson 11, filling containers. Problem number one, cylinder A, B, and C have the same radius but different heights. Put the cylinders in order of their volume from least to greatest. Cylinder B has the shortest height. It's going to have the least volume. Cylinder C has the next shortest height. So cylinder C would have the second most volume of the three cylinders. And finally, cylinder A. It's the tallest of the three cylinders. Therefore, it's going to have the greatest volume of the three cylinders. The volume of the cylinders from least to greatest is B, C, A. Problem number two. Two cylinders, A and B, each started with different amounts of water. The graph shows how the height of the water changed as the volume of water increased in each cylinder. Match the graphs of A and B for cylinders P and Q. Explain your reasoning. First, you can tell that they started with different amounts of water by looking at the vertical axis, the y-axis, and you can see where the lines start. That's the y-intercept. Both graphs start at different points of the y-axis. Graph A shows that the height in centimeters increases at a faster rate than graph B. The cylinders are the same height, but cylinder Q has a smaller radius, so it will fill faster. The height of graph A increases faster than graph B, so cylinder Q matches with graph A, and cylinder P matches with graph B. Problem number three. Which of the following graphs could represent the volume of water in a cylinder as a function of its height? Explain your reasoning. As the height of the cylinder increases, the volume of water increases at the same rate. So I would select the graph on the left because as the height increases, the volume of water also increases at the same rate. Problem number four from eighth grade unit five, lesson three. Together, the areas of the rectangle sum to 30 square centimeters. A, write an equation showing the relationship between X and Y. For the rectangle on the left, we have the area equals length times width, which is also equivalent to width times length. And since the length is x and the width is 3, the area equals 3x or 3 times x. And for the rectangle on the right, again we have area equals length times width, and in this case the length is y and the width is 2. So the area equals 2y, or 2 times y. To write an equation showing the relationship between x and y, we can take the 3x from the rectangle on the left and the 2y from the rectangle on the right and write the equation as follows. 3x plus 2y equals 30. Now we know it equals 30 because the information at the top of this problem says the area of the sum of the two rectangles is 30 square centimeters. B. Fill in the table with the missing values. When x equals 3, this means that we can substitute the x with the 3. So instead of 3 times x, we have 3 times 3 plus 2y equals 30. And 3 times 3 is 9, so now the equation reads 9 plus 2y equals 30. Subtract 9 from both sides of the equal sign, and you're left with 2y equals 21. Since we're solving for y, we need to divide both sides by 2. 2y divided by 2 equals 1y or y, and 21 divided by 2 equals 10.5. So when the value for x is 3, the value for y is 10.5. Next, they give us the value for y. So when the value for y is 5, we can substitute the y with a 5. Now the equation reads 3x plus 2 times 5 equals 30. Since 2 times 5 is 10, the equation reads 3x plus 10 equals 30. 
Let's subtract 10 from both sides of the equal sign, and we're left with 3x equals 20. Since we're solving for x, we need to divide both sides of the equal sign by 3. 3x divided by 3 equals 1x, or x, and 20 divided by 3 equals 6.6 .6 repeating, or 6 and 2 thirds. So when the value for y is 5, the value for x is 6 and 2 thirds. The next one that they give us is the value for x, which is 8. So when the value for x is 8, we can substitute the x with an 8. So now the equation reads 3 times 8 plus 2y equals 30. 3 times 8 is 24, so the equation reads 24 plus 2y equals 30. Let's subtract 24 from both sides of the equal sign, and we're left with 2y equals 6. Since we're solving for y, we'll have to divide both sides by 2. 2y divided by 2 equals 1y or y, and 6 divided by 2 equals 3. When the value for x is 8, the value for y is 3. Next, they give us 10 as the value for y. In this case, we need to substitute the y with 10. So now the equation reads 3x plus 2 times 10 equals 30. Since 2 times 10 is 20, the equation reads 3x plus 20 equals 30. We'll have to subtract 20 from both sides of the equal sign, and we're left with 3x equals 10. Since we're solving for x, we'll have to divide both sides by 3. 3x divided by 3 equals 1x, or x, and 10 divided by 3 equals 10 thirds, or 3 and 1 third, which is also 3.3 repeating. So when the value for y is 10, the value for x is 3 and 1 third. Finally, the last value they give us for x is 12, so we'll substitute a 12 for the x. That becomes 3 times 12 plus 2y equals 30. 3 times 12 is 36, so now we have 36 plus 2y equals 30. Next, we need to subtract 36 from both sides of the equal sign. That gives us 2y equals negative 6. Divide both sides by 2 to get the y by itself, and you have y equals negative 3. And remember, y equals a side length. So this is not possible because a side length cannot be a negative. I'd like to give a shout out to Froyan Lopez for helping me out with this last problem. I appreciate that. Thank you. Help me disrupt YouTube's algorithm by liking this video, commenting on this video, sharing this video, and subscribing to my channel. Thanks. I appreciate it.